Kia ora koutou, yeah. Um, yeah, it's actually three questions, eh? It's uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, so that's a bit of background, then the work that you do, the focus, and then the motivation for joining. So for the first one, uh, a little bit about myself. I'm an industrial and organisational psychologist uh, with an interest really in humanitarian work psychology, very much focused on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and the provision of decent work and uh, alongside economic growth in a sustainable way. Um, in terms of, of, of work, I do a lot of work, as I've just said, on, on, on issues like living wages, uh, social protection at work, uh, diversity and inclusion at work, protection of human rights at work, and the links between work and wider life, life satisfaction, well-being, and so on. Um, in terms of what motivated me to become an editor of IPP, uh, International Perspectives in Psychology, I wasn't motivated really. I was nominated to, to apply. I was asked to, I was nominated as a potential applicant for the role of editor. And the Division 52, which is International Psychology, uh, who run the flagship journal, contacted me. I hadn't really heard too much about the division. And the more I found out, the more I liked. And the more I found out about the International Journal, the more I liked. Uh, in particular, because my own background is very much in international psychology. So, I think that the motivation was resonance with personal values. At that point, I'll, I'll hand you over to winners. <laughs> Great. So my background is in community development initially, before I rejoined academia also as an organizational psychologist and with an interest of bridging um, community development with organizational psychology and looking at how can we apply organizational psychology differently um, that is to provide decent lives and sustainable lives for those who work. And so my interest also lies in humanitarian work psychology and in applying organizational psychology to unusual settings, um, not the corporate uh, professional worker, but the people at the lower end of the wage spectrum. And what motivated me really uh, about being involved with this journal is that it looks at different perspectives to the mainstream by considering perspectives from different parts of the world um, and not just the European, Northern American, Eurocentric view on things. And so I believe that providing a wider diversity of views will help in understanding humans at work better and the psychology of people better and to see the differences and nuances and so that was a great interest of mine um, in joining the journal. So what does international perspectives in psychology stand for and, and what makes it so special? Ooh, there are a number of things to mention here. Uh, firstly, it focuses on international perspectives, so bringing in diversity of views. Secondly, that it focuses on um, academia as well as practice and consulting in psychology. So there also a diversity of views, not just your mainstream research, empirical research articles. We, for example, publish policy briefs. And thirdly, we have a focus on the sustainable United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And with that, we ask every author to provide a brief statement on how the manuscript relates to the Sustainable Development Goals, which really seek to um, provide a development agenda for the world. And by aligning it to the Sustainable Development Goals, we believe it immediately highlights the impact that this author submission can make, rather than to be focused merely on the research itself. Wonderful. Thanks, Ines. I, 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 shall I join in now? I, 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 that was really well said, and I think you said you really summarised very well what the journal um, stands for and what makes it so special. And I, I think when you were talking there, I could hear, you know, you're, you're talking about a diversity and inclusion of different perspectives in different ways. And we've both outlined how we've got a, a bit of an anchor point in industrial and organisational psychology and then community psychology and so on. But the, the journal itself is quite broad. It, you know, it covers health psychology, educational psychology, counselling psychology, social psychology, um, and and so on. So it's diverse in that respect. And the subtitle of the journal, which is um, research, practice, and consultancy, underscores as well. You know that it spans. You know it spans the academic research, but it also goes into practice 
and it recognises the importance of different forms of consultancy and for different stakeholder groups. And the only other thing I would add is that uh, it really underscores uh, what, you know, something that's a bit special about the journal. Although it's anchored in the Division 52 International Psychology inside the American Psychological Association, the guidelines for authors actually say that we actively encourage uh, people not just from the United States to author papers and also to rotate authorship evenly around so that people are writing about their own countries and so on. And so it's very much, um, it's an unusual journal in that respect that it, it, it it's very equitable and it respects location as well as international perspectives. So why should authors publish in IPP? I think there's great value because it um, really gives an international perspective. So for many journals, it is important that results are generalizable to the broader societal context to the world um, because we're looking at what is fundamental about people's psychology and thus re applies to everyone. Whereas IPP specifically is interest in context and in context geographic locations that are not commonly covered in journals. So where a study, for example, takes place in a particular setting and this particular setting is important and determines the methodology or the results. That is what we would want to hear about in IPP. It is exactly that because we want to get the variety of views and see the nuances in people's psychology in various areas of psychology. And I think this is really important that IPP is an outlet for voices that are not always considered in in other psychological journals. Stu, I don't know if you would like to add something to that. I think you said that really well, and as I would only add that as well as the diversity of location and context and the voices and the different psychologies, plural, uh, we also accept, and this is often part and parcel of the same idea really, different methodologies. So we're not wedded to survey methodology or experimental methodology or case studies or and it can be mixed methods. We have no singular preference and, and in a way the research comes first and the methodology comes after and it, and it has to suit the context and I think that makes us a broader house than many other journals in this in the psychology space with all due respect. <laughs> and maybe an, another aspect to add to it is that we specifically invite policy briefs. And I think the discipline of psychology has a big contribution to make in, in policy making and in, in advising policy, but we are not, as a community, not yet heard as much as other disciplines. And so I think it is a great outlet to provide information as policy briefs through IPP. Very true, and and that's very true, and it goes to policy at the, the sort of UN level through the SDGs, which are a feature of this journal, but also policies at organisational level and community level and, you know, municipal level, small enterprises and so on. So it's a multi-level kind of policy focus as well, which I think is quite unique. So where would you place the journal right now and where do you want to go with it? I think. To the first part of the question, where would you place the journal right now? I'd say we're very much an expanding and growing journal. Uh, it's a journal that's um, open to new ideas, as we've just said. And we've got, for example, we've got a number of special issues coming through in and around COVID, in and around gender equity during COVID, um, task force responses from the division during uh, economic crisis and on decent work and livelihoods. So we have a number of special issues, but we're also open to new special issues. So the journal is in a space right now where we're, we're actually keen to hear ideas about ways to take it forward, different forms of papers, different foci in, in, in papers, articles and briefs and so on. And that makes it all uh, a really exciting place to be. Uh, where do you want to go with it? I, I, you know, we don't know how the current pandemic is going to unfold. Uh, of course, we all hope it's going to play out well. Uh, I, I think we, I, don't, I hope I'm not speaking out of turn for Inners here, but I think the Inners and the editorial team and the division really want to continue to take the journal in the same direction. And that's to say to be responsive to those big issues. Now, they are challenges for humanity like a pandemic, 
but there are also opportunities for humanity to build back better. And there are opportunities for science and social science of all different denominations to have a voice and a space. So I hope that the journal continues to grow, I'm sure it will, and that it keeps, um, uh, keeps on enabling different perspectives to come in and to keep adding to that discussion about where humanity wants to go to come back from this, uh, this, this disaster in a, in a positive way and to build back better. Yeah, maybe just to, to add to it, where the journal is at, it's, it's something that I uh, forgot to mention earlier, maybe, um, that we're really interested in people working in unusual contexts, meaning in areas of psychology that are not usually covered, but also in geographic contexts that are not usually covered. And what we really encourage is the contribution of local researchers and practitioners and consultants in psychology. So rather than for um, me to go into um, a country that I have very little knowledge or for that I've never lived in myself, um, it would be encouraged that I work with together with local individuals who really understand the nuances of the context. So where the journal is at right now um, and what we'd like to continue forward is to to work with local people in a con in a local context that is not usually covered by mainstream journals. That's really well said and oh, I just wonder if I might sort of follow through on that a bit because when you were saying it I, it reminded me you know that um, one of the the core I think foci in the journal is it, we hope that it becomes a space for indigenous voices and indigenous first nation perspectives and, and those perspectives have not been served terribly well by psychology, I think, in the past. And of course, from an international perspective, uh, from an indigenous perspective, sorry, or, or psychology is often international by, by definition. And I think indigenous perspectives have many of the answers to that question we posed before about building back better, because a lot of the answers for the future will be in the past, will be in those, the, the traditional wisdoms from indigenous cultures. Everybody is indigenous somewhere, and everybody has a role to play in that process and those outcomes. How will working with Hogriff help to achieve this? Well, that's a, that's a really interesting question. I, I think from, from the start, from the, the start of our discussions with Hogriff, I've gotten the impression that Hogriff is a very uh, innovative publisher. They're open, very open to the new formats that IPP is encouraging. For example, uh, the policy briefs formats, the reviews, the realist reviews, uh, integrative reviews. Uh, they're very receptive to uh, um, any kind of article, any kind of paper, and they're also receptive to the, the application of the research that's published in the journal. And, you know, I think that as we go forward, we'll continue to keep that open mind on, on ways that psychology can respond to crises and actually help to enable new opportunities for humanity to prosper and thrive. Yes, and maybe to add to that, um, Stu, from what I've experienced, Hografer is a very established publisher with lots of experience and um, really creates an enabling environment for us as the editors to work to timelines, to meet timelines and to make our work easier, as well as the work of authors. And so I think the experience paired with the efficiency with which processes work and the understanding of how best to get research turned out quickly, not just research, but also practitioner and uh, consultants contributions really will help to to get publications published quickly, as well as give us the freedom to to shape the journal and the journal's agenda in the direction that we've described earlier. Yeah, and I, if I might add to that as well, yeah, I, I hear that. It's a, a strong message. And I, I think Hogriff has signaled to us that they're keen for us to listen to, to people's ideas from the research community, from the practice community, from the consultancy community, from indigenous perspectives, from international perspectives of all kinds on new ways of doing things. And so I, I think that can, that that continued receptivity is really, really important and bodes well for the future.